In this video I'll be going through the 2022 Electricity and Electromagnetism paper. Question 1. Two parallel plates are set up 2.2mm apart, with 15 volts between them. Show that the electric field strength between the plates is 6.8 times 10 to the 3 volts per meter. From your formula sheet our electric field strength is voltage over distance, where our voltage is our 15, and our distance is our 2.2mm, which converted into meters is 0.0022 meters. Putting those numbers in, gives me 6.8182 times 10 to the 3 volts per meter, or 6.8 to 2 significant figures, which is what we're trying to find. An electron at rest is released from the negative plate and accelerates towards the positive plate. Calculate the maximum speed of the electron when it reaches the positive plate. What we need to recognize is that our kinetic energy that our electron gains is going to equal the electric potential energy that it had. Kinetic energy is given by half mv squared. Electric potential energy is given by eqd. Where on our formula sheet we're given the mass of the electron as 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. We're wanting to find our velocity. We just found our electric field strength. On our formula sheet we're given the charge of the electron as negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And we know the distance between the plates. So we just need to solve this for velocity. My first step is to multiply both sides by 2. Then divide both sides by mass. And finally, square root both sides. Putting our numbers in. Gives me 2.3 times 10 to the 6 meters per second to two significant figures. Note that we needed to drop our negative sign here, because otherwise our square root was going to have a negative number, which would produce a math error. A student states that increasing the distance between the plates while keeping the voltage the same will mean that an electron released from rest at the negative plate is accelerating over a longer distance, and will therefore reach a higher speed than in part b when it reaches the positive plate. Use physics principles to explain why this is incorrect. Looking at our equation that we just made for velocity, initially it may appear that increasing our distance is going to increase our velocity. However, our electric field strength is equal to V over D. Therefore, increasing our distance is going to equally decrease our electric field strength. We can go a little bit further mathematically and take our velocity equation and substitute our electric field strength for V over D. Our Ds cancel out which gives us 2V over M. So as we can see, our velocity only depends on the voltage and the mass. Increasing the plate separation will equally decrease the electric field strength. These two factors cancel out and the final speed is unchanged. State one thing that could be done to increase the maximum speed of the electron. As discussed earlier, our final speed depends on the voltage and the mass. We can't change the mass of the electron without tearing the universe apart, but we can increase the voltage. The diagram below shows the electric field between a set of parallel plates, d meters apart, with v volts between them. The distance between the plates is now doubled and the voltage between them is halved. State what happens to the strength of the electric field, your answer should include a number. Because our electric field strength is voltage over distance, if we were to double our distance and half our voltage, that's going to give us a quarter of our original strength. So the electric field strength will be quartered. Using the same scale, draw in the field lines on the diagram below to show the new electric field between the plates. The amount of field lines is proportional to the strength of our electric field, which in our original diagram we have a total of 12. Since our electric field strength is corded, we now need to have 12 divided by 4, which gives us 3. We already have 2, so we just need to add in 1. Question 2. A student finds some car headlamps that are labelled 12 volts, 55 watts. Show the resistance of a single headlamp is 2.62 ohms. Resistance can be described with V equals IR, Ohm's law, where we can solve for resistance by dividing both sides by I, where we know our voltage, but we don't know our current. 
We can find the current using our power equation, P equals IV, where we know our power and we know our voltage. So we could just solve this for our current by dividing both sides by voltage. Putting our numbers in, gives me 4.58 amps. Putting that into our final equation, indeed gives me 2.62 ohms, which is what we're trying to find. The student connects two of these headlamps labelled A and B, and another lamp C, which is used to light up the number plate in the circuit below. The resistance of the lamp C is 1.22 ohms. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit. And so our C is 1.22, whereas our A and B are 2.62, which is what we found in the previous question. The resistance of our parallel branch here is described by 1 over our total resistance being equal to the sum of our 1 over resistances. We can solve this for resistance by taking the inverse of both sides, which gives me 1.31 ohms which to be clear is for our parallel branch. Now to find our actual total resistance, we have this parallel branch in series with our 1.22, and the rule is quite simply to add them together, which gives me 2.53 ohms. The student connects a radio with resistance R to the circuit. Use physics principles to describe the effect adding the radio would have on the brightness of lamp A. Assume the radio and lamps are all operating. Start by describing what effect adding the radio would have on the circuit resistance. Adding this resistor is going to increase the resistance of this branch and of the entire circuit. This isn't like adding a resistor on a separate pathway, which would allow more current to flow because there is a new pathway. What we've instead done is make an existing pathway worse. What this means is that our circuit current is going to decrease. Considering our lamp over here with our Ohm's law, if our current decreases and we know our resistance is staying the same, then our voltage must also decrease because our circuit voltage across this lamp here and this branch here must add to 12. That means the voltage across this branch must increase. This increased voltage across lamp A means that it's going to glow brighter. So let's write that down. Adding the radio will increase circuit resistance, reducing the circuit current. This decreased current will result in a decreased voltage across lamp C. Because the circuit voltage is unchanged, the voltage across the parallel section, and therefore the voltage across lamp A, must increase, causing lamp A to glow brighter. Give at least three reasons why the circuit in part C would not be a good way to connect the 12 volt headlamps in a car. First of all, if lamp C died, then our whole circuit would fail. And also our headlamps are rated for 12 volts, whereas in this circuit, none of them are going to be getting our full 12 volts. Furthermore, because they're all going to be getting different voltages, they are all going to have different brightnesses. So let's write that down. If lamp C fails, the circuit will be broken. None of the lamps will receive the 12 volts they are rated for and every bulb will have a different voltage, and therefore a different brightness. Question 3. A wire is pushed through a magnetic field at a constant speed of 2.7 meters per second. The length of the wire is 15.2 centimeters, or 0.152 meters. The magnetic field strength is 1.2 millitesla, or 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla, and the width of the magnetic field is 14.3 centimeters, or 0.143 meters. Clearly mark the positive end of the wire on the diagram above. These dots represent a magnetic field coming out of the page, so if we point our right hand fingers out of the page, and our thumb in the direction of our wire's velocity, your palm should be pointing downwards, indicating the direction that positive charges are being forced. Our positive end is therefore the bottom end. Calculate the voltage induced in the wire. The equation for the voltage induced in a moving wire is V equals BVL, where we have our B, we have our V, and our L is not the length of the wire, it is the length of the wire in the field, which is the width of the magnetic field. Putting those numbers in, which gives me 4.63 times 10 to the minus 4 volts, to three significant figures. The wire is now stationary and connected to a circuit that contains a 3.4 ohm resistor and a 12 volt battery. Calculate the magnetic force on the wire. 
the force on a current carrying wire is given by the equation F equals BIL, where we know our magnetic field strength, and we know our L, that is our width of the magnetic field, but we don't know our current. What we do know, however, is that we have a 12 volt supply and a 3.4 ohm resistance. Ohm's law tells us V equals IR, where we can divide both sides by R to solve for current. Put our numbers in, giving me 3.53 amps. Putting that into our final equation, gives me 6.06 .06 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons to three significant figures. State the direction of the magnetic force on the wire as either up the page, down the page, left, right, out of the page, into the page, and no force. Using our right hand rule, our fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field, which is out of the page. Our thumb points in the direction of the current, which since this is the positive terminal, is in this direction here. Doing that correctly, your palm should be facing towards the left, indicating the direction of our force. An electron cutting the magnetic field experiences a force that makes it follow a circular path. The electron is traveling from the left into the field. Clearly mark on the diagram above the direction the electron moves around the circle. Imagining a negative charge here, with our right hand rule once again, our fingers pointing up, and in this case we know the force must be towards the center of the circle, since because it's moving in a circle, we must have a centripetal force. Doing that, your thumb should be pointing towards the right, which would be the direction of a positive charge. Because this is a negative charge, it must be moving in the opposite direction towards the left. Use physics principles to explain why there is a force on the electron as it cuts the magnetic field. As the electron moves it produces a magnetic field, the electron's field combines with the existing field, resulting in a stronger field on one side. The electron experiences a net force from the area of strong field towards the area of weaker field. And we're done.